Hola, how are you? So in this video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of maintenance here in the Mustang. As you know, modern Mustangs here, uh, except the Coyote, of course, direct inject the cars. They got problems. One of the problems, of course, is stuff building up on the backs of the valves, yada yada, because no port injection, nothing to clean. We all understand. Well, thankfully, there are products out on the market such as Ya, right? Ya, generally work pretty good in keeping up with the problematic GDI systems on these new cars. So today, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this in that and uh, see how much smoke we can create. And uh, yeah, we're gonna perform a little bit of an intake valve clean here on the EcoBoost Mustang. <music> So the car has approximately 30 some thousand, I don't know. It's got a lot more than you think it would. I drive it a lot. Good thing is I've had the Mishimoto catch can on since, uh, I think I'll put that on just before 10,000 miles, um, maybe around seven or 8,000 miles. It's been on for a long time. Unfortunately, that's not going to be 100% effective um, of pulling all the possible uh, oil vapor away from going back into and on the backs of the valves. And of course, there's all the mileage that accrued before I put the catch can on. So I'm sure there's probably a little bit of buildup on the back of the valves and, you know, probably could use a little bit of a cleaning at this point. 30,000 miles or so, um, considering there could be a little bit of buildup. I mean, this is just maintenance. A product like this, every so many thousands of miles, just keeps everything nice and happy. And a happy car that doesn't break makes a happy Kirk because he can keep money in his bank account. So I love having a reliable car. That's always a big plus. But having a reliable car doesn't mean you can't neglect them. So you have to keep up on them to keep them reliable. So I don't mind performing maintenance. I'd rather do maintenance crap than repairs. So there's always that. It's been a little while since I used this product. The first time I used it was with the SHO. And um, let's see, warm up the engine, it's warm. With engine running at 2000 RPM, spray product and short burst until can is empty if necessary. Accelerate the engine two or three times without seating 3500 RPM, run engine idle for one minute, turn off, reassemble intake, let engine sit for one hour, restart engine and drive the piss out of it. Got it, yep. I'm gonna see if the trick I did with the SHO works on this car. So it was something pretty simple I did, um, and I think it should work. I never showed it. I meant to make a video, but I never did. And I actually figured it out accidentally. But first, before I do that, let me get everything set up. So, you know, it tells you to put the straw in, you know, at the, through here and all that, I don't want that. So for me, I like to usually go in right behind the throttle body. That way the throttle plate doesn't get in the way and go to somewhere like this little thing right here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and spray it straight down in there. You see the problem here is you're supposed to raise the RPMs up every time you spray it and burst. Well, that usually requires two people to do it. The little trick I found out is simply, as long as this works on this car, is disconnect the uh, harness to the throttle pedal. So with that disconnected, if I start the car, what it should do now is idle weirdly, but it should kind of go up to 2000 and come back down all on its own. And you can see every, of course, everything's going crazy because I have everything disconnected. But it should do that. It should idle, either idle high or idle uh, erratically. There it goes. The RPMs go up to about 2000 RPM and then they drop. Perfect, so every time it goes up to 2000 RPM on its own, that's when I'll spray in the burst of the cleaner. Let it calm down. And of course, I'm just gonna repeat this process until the can is empty. So once I do that, then uh, gotta let it sit. All right, I think that's it. I think it's all left in the can. It took long enough. So now, as per direction, turn the 
car off. And it's got to sit and bake. Of course, at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect my accelerator pedal because I kind of need that. And of course, I'm going to put this back where it belongs and put the clip back in. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool little tip there to do that job by yourself in case you don't have anyone to help. So it seems like that works in pretty much any modern Ford car with a drive-by wire setup. From my experience, I mean, this is a 2020 SHO, is a 2014, and it worked all the same. So obviously because I did that, it's gonna throw a code. So of course you have to go in, read the codes, delete them, and then you should be good to go. But uh, yeah, so there's that. I'm gonna let the car sit. Once it does that, I'll take it out for a drive and see if it smokes any, and maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't, it's actually a good thing. It means everything's pretty much clean. But Little maintenance never hurts. One hour later. All right, so the waiting period is over. So we're gonna go ahead and start the car up here and see if we get a smoke show or not. Uh, of course, first thing I gotta do is wipe these codes real quick. Ream should have a whole slew of codes. Throttle position sensor, yep. And air leak between throttle body and take valves. Yep, there was definitely both of those things going on. All right, clear, beautiful. I love how specific the codes are too. It really helps when diagnosing problems. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we got. Any smoke? No? No smoke? Wow. It sounds like it's idling smoother though. Oh, 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 uh oh. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's give it some gas, see if anything comes out. Uh, no? It's definitely more snappy, like the, <laughs> the exhaust note. No smoke though, none whatsoever. I was very much expecting smoke, honestly, even if it was just a little bit, but I guess there isn't that much built up, which is probably a, a really good thing. That means that there wasn't that much built up prior to the catch can and that the catch can has been doing its fair share of work, keeping everything um, clean. So just drive around, I'm gonna get on to it and hey, see what happens. Maybe it will smoke up once it warms up and you know everything gets hot. Getting out on the road here. So I'm gonna let it eat once I get down the road here. I got the exhaust valves opened up. That way anything doesn't get trapped in the mufflers and just goes straight on through. So let's see what, uh, let's see what it does. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it started breaking up really bad. <laughs> uh, people are like, oh, good job, dumbass. You just blew your car up. Oh, it's breaking up really bad when I give it gas. Guess let the engine run a little bit at just normal operation, not get on it with too much load till I heat everything up appropriately. And of course, it's raining as usual. See, there it goes. Now it's not breaking up. It was, because I had it in drag strip mode, it was breaking up and now it's not. So maybe it was just that little bit it puffed out and it's all cleared out now. Let me try to put it back in drag strip mode because that is the hardest running mode. So the car is gonna run the most aggressive in this mode. No, now it's running, now it's running nice. It was just that one big puff of smoke and um, and cleared out now. I guess maybe it was a little bit up on uh, spark plugs or something and just had to clear itself out. But if that's all that was in there, which is actually what I expected a little bit, I would actually thought maybe just a little bit more smoke, but uh, that if that's all it was, then hey, I'm perfectly fine and happy with that. That means there wasn't that much built up. Maybe it was just a little bit on the backs, which is hopefully good. Um, hopefully maybe it was a little bit 
maybe clear it around the valve seats or whatever, uh, I mean, that can only help. But what I've noticed is this engine has really good compression. When I was sticking the straw of the cleaner down into the port there, I mean, it was sucking the straw down like it was a... <laughs> So I know the, the engine has really good compression. I don't see that there's any concerns about, uh, you know, valve trouble. Yeah, it's running good. It's running like it normally does. seconds you know it's not like a huge difference once again but it just seems like it just kind of just starts spinning a little bit quicker so um, if if that is actually something that's happening one the only couple things I can imagine is the cleaner helped clean some carbon off of the exhaust side of the turbo you know on the fin so it rotates a little bit quicker and or help clean a little bit around the exhaust valves so more exhaust is making its way out more efficiently perhaps it's definitely a little bit snappier so that's good so all in all yeah I think it worked out pretty well um just a little bit of build up as suspected I mean the car's only got 30,000 miles I wasn't expecting dramatic amounts of buildup, but I wanted to at least try to clean up any little bit that was there so over time doesn't accumulate to too much. So um, if that's all that was on the valves, uh, great. So that means it's pretty much clean. So I'm just keep it the way it is and it should take care of me for a long time to come or until I decide to go stupid with it and uh, make it unreliable. <laughs> so there's always that. That's always an option. But in order for me to build something like this, I need for you to like the video. So please, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share with everyone you know. And if you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for next true car enthusiast video.